Yeah, so here I am. Oh, it's just way too tempting to do a little lifestyle video here today. Uh, I was working on some other videos on my phone, and uh, I'm just taking a pool day. Uh, try to get to doing this uh, once a week. You know, just pan it around a little bit. So, very nice uh, resort. Uh, I'll put the link in the description I guess as they say it's uh, um, this is Rusty's Resort in uh, downtown Nansung which uh, of course Nansung is uh, one of the satellite cities or suburban cities of uh, Kolat we're about just about exactly a half hour northeast uh, so way into the Isan uh, cultural region uh, yet I'm half hour to Kolat where they have everything and Nansung is no joke of a city on its own. It, it, you know, you've got several resorts like this. This is probably, in my opinion, the nicest. Um, they have a fantastic cafe and restaurant. Very, very good coffee. Extremely good food. Uh, nice, friendly staff. Um, nice little place. Um, recommend. Uh, got some friends coming to see me here soon. I think they're going to stay here. And uh, next year, maybe a buddy of mine from the States. I might come here. I'll, I'll recommend this place as well. It's really, it's really great. And um, so here I am, all adapted. And uh, that's the four stages of culture shock I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, the first step is the honeymoon phase. You come to something new, and oh, everything is awesome. Oh, isn't that cute? Oh, isn't that nice? And everyone's polite, like the first week in college when you're in line getting your food. Oh, pardon me. Oh, do you want? Do you need that? And by the end of the next next semester, you're uh, in the first semester, you're, you're wrestling over the last of the mashed potatoes. It's kind of like that. Everyone's nice at first, so um, that's the honeymoon phase. And then there's your frustration phase, which can be your shock phase, because you're you're 10,000 miles or so away from home, more than likely. Um, Thailand is really remote from the Western world. It's yeah, it's really it's really uh, it's far. It's just about maximally far. I think Japan's closer. So, uh, and, and pretty, and that's true. Um, so, you have that, and then you have your adaptation phase, that's three. Uh, and then finally, your, 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 your settled in phase, you know, your, your adjustment or whatever you want to officially call it. But it's your four phases of culture shock. And uh, I definitely had it. Um, and I had a stressful year. Uh, just tell a little bit of my example. This is probably going to be the same for most of my viewers on my channel. Um, you know, I finished my divorce last year. You know, I really thought, I mean, I knew it wasn't great, but I thought I was a relatively happy enough married guy to stay married. And I uh, had two adult children. I, I didn't want to break up the band, you know, as it were. And uh, with COVID, I couldn't work out anymore for a while. The gyms were shut down. And I was just barely maintaining my physicality and managing my pain levels myself um, with just a very specific very advanced i mean i was one level below intermediate competition level uh weightlifting and i i, I was really doing something it wasn't just i wasn't just your average guy going to the gym and and, and, and uh, you know wearing some athletic wear for a little bit and going home getting a coffee and i was really doing it and um you know with the COVID, I, I all that shut everything down and my back became unmanageable and by the time COVID was kind of the the, the sanctions were being lifted and i could go work out again i couldn't couldn't and I had slipped past that that kind of that point of no a literal point of no return for me I talked to a couple surgeons talked to my chiropractor who hates surgeons talked to a rehab guy who hates surgeons got every opinion out there tried everything I could and I was screwed I was pardon me I was done so uh, I had to have the surgery I had to have the big no bueno fusion and uh, I didn't go so hot boys and girls it didn't go so hot I've got a pinched uh, pinched a spinal column or something it's 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 painful so uh, I'm done so I'm here so within a short period of time is the moral of the story I go from thinking everything's okay to being very very uh, unhealthy very unhappy and there's a clock has been put on my life and my mobility that was the change that was the bottom line change from COVID for me I had a clock put on me and it was very odd. Maybe there was one before, but I didn't see it. But now there was one for sure, and I could see it. And I was painfully aware of it, minute by minute, with that pain. So 
that I really want to spend the rest of my life being marginalized and mocked and, you know, just completely blatantly disrespected in a home that I physically built, two homes that I built, not to get on a soapbox, but, you know, two homes I extensively rebuilt, all to whatever my ex-wife wanted, and, man, nah, nothing was good enough, you know, nothing was good enough. So, decided that I, you guys, I I'm not saying this to, to, to for my benefit, it's really... I think a lot of guys are probably in the same boat. You know, we do all this work for other people, and where's our reward? When when do we get ours? You know, when you know, I love my kids, and I and I and I and I still love my ex-wife in a way. You know, I just I, I feel very sorry for her because um, I got to leave. You can't leave yourself, so she's stuck. But but I'm and I hear she's quite unhappy and making a lot of other people back home unhappy, and that, that I can't help that. I can't. I, I no longer try to raise adults. I've done that before. That didn't work out so well for me. Or the adults I tried to raise. So. Yeah, here I am. Here's little old me, and here's the weird part. So I think it, it, right now it's late August, and I would have swore it was Tuesday all day, and it's Wednesday. Somehow I lost a day this week. That's how nice this Thailand is. It's just... I forget what time it is, I forget what day it is, and it's the weeks just fly by. The time is just flying by. And when time is flying by, that's when you know you're having a great time. And so the point is, going from late August last year to this year, that's right about when uh, the final papers were put in with the judge and then the real haggling starts. Um, just a side note on that, in America they say, oh, it's 50-50 and all that, it's really not. You're responsible for more of the debt, as a man, I don't know why. Um, the company that, 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 that I owned a majority of that we used to make a very nice living with, all of a sudden those debts were all mine. And the assets, no, no those were half. Those we split half. And then uh, the other party can make any unreasonable demands they want and tie you up forever if they want. And if your ex-wife or soon-to-be ex-wife is a professional arguer, more or less, um, and, you know, it's like giving coke to an addict. So uh, ultimately I agreed to a relatively ridiculous settlement and just to get my freedom i bought my freedom i bought my freedom and uh and no regrets on that i mean really no regrets uh because that clock was on me and i didn't want to take it would be another year you know and 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 i fortunately i had a very ethical attorney who might i should probably uh put him put his link in see if he wants me to put his name out there he was really ethical and extremely low in cost and the other attorney tried to run up the bill he gave him the other my the other attorney for the other side gave my guy uh, a little hint hey there's there's plenty of money in this estate to pay these fees let's kind of keep this going and and they uh, sent over some inflammatory documents intended to make me upset to make me then want to do discovery and, and go after her and then run the bill up and and my attorney said I am not even forwarding that to my client. I'm going to sit on it. And, and, and that, they tried, they made a couple runs. My attorney never told me any of this. And uh, eventually they gave up. And, and then I took the kind of, you know, baloney deal to keep my language clean here. And uh, I got out, I got my freedom. And by December 15th, I was here. And so the bottom line point being, I was just about a year From filing, it's been just about a year from when I filed to today, and I've been here seven months. That's a lot of change in a short amount of time. And I was prepared for the culture of an urban culture in Thailand. And it shocked me to see the differences in a rural or farm culture, even though we're not in farmland here. I mean, you can kind of see behind me is, but I mean, this is... This is a very nice place, and I'll, I'll have to do a tour of Nansum. It's really, when I get my camera, I'll drive around, uh, drive around Nansum, and I'll show it. It's a, it's a nice city. Um, I think it's pretty in its own way. And um, so it was shocking for me to go from the urban culture I prepared, the language I'd studied. The language is quite different here. I, I studied Thai. Nobody here speaks Thai. I mean, they, they can, but they all speak Thai Kalat, um, which I, is, is really different. It's really different. It's got a completely different sound to it. All, not all, but many of the keywords are different. Um, it's it's different. And uh, your average Thai speaks two to three. I'd say three languages is typical. Not two to three. I'd say three. Some speak two. Some speak four. Um, you've got your Isan, uh, Thai Kalat, Thai, and English. And uh, 
that's pretty common. That's um, my my uh, my girlfriend speaks just a little tiny bit of Isan, but doesn't really speak Isan. She can't have a conversation in Isan, but she she knows many many words. Um, she's got friends who speak Isan, but then uh, but then they also speak Thai Kalap, but they don't speak English. So that three language average is real common. It's real real common. So on uh, culture shock, here we are. It's taken me seven months to learn Thai a lot better, a little bit of Thai a lot, just so it doesn't freak me out. And I was pissed when I found out that my girlfriend is speaking Thai a lot for several months. And I'm, I'm straining, trying to figure out why my Thai is so bad, why I don't know it, what's going on. Oh man, I, I had uh, hired a mover and I told her in three days I'm out. And uh, I got the apology of a lifetime, I'll tell you. Um, and you know, it's still, I got to keep evaluating and make sure this is cool, because uh, that wasn't cool. Um, I don't know, I really don't know why anybody would do that, um, but uh, they really do like their language advantage here, and they do give it up reluctantly, and there is a lot of baggage here, and many Thais are against teaching foreigners Thai. Um, that has come up many, many times with me. Um, and, and, I, and I'm not a brilliant speaker. I, I mean, I speak way above your average you know, tourist and your guy that's been here a couple of years or whatever. I'm way above that, but I'm nothing like some of these, these, these guys that can, that can really speak it and get into a deep conversation and just go on and on and just, just converse with them. I can't do that. And um, even with that, it's, it's unlimited in what I'm able to do. You know, I, I, can, I, can, I can plenty get by easy. I can ask for stuff, go here. I checked in at the desk, got the pool rental for the day, asked about some amenities, and went in and got my spot. You know, no problem. You know, I, can, I can navigate and all that. Half of me doesn't want to learn much more Thai because I'm getting around just fine. But I think I want to really learn it. I want to really learn it and, and, and really have some Thai friends, I think. But uh, So that's your culture shock. So I came here. There was a honeymoon phase for... You know, two months, everyone at my girlfriend's work was super nice to me. Uh, and then I mentioned jealousy before. There got to be some serious, serious, not joking at all, serious jealousy with some co-workers because not only was she young and pretty and had a higher level, you know, government ranking and salary, now she had a, uh, a, a Falana and, uh, you know, me. And uh, that was it. That was, that was one thing too many. And she lost a ton of, you know, friendships over that. As I've lost some friendships moving here, you know, my my ex went around and, you know, made it as uncomfortable for, I've had, you know, I'm sure you all go through the same thing. I've had several friends text and call me, they go, Rob, I don't know what's going on. This is what your ex is doing, you know, nothing I can do about it. But, uh... So that was the honeymoon phase, and then, it, then that kind of, that jealousy came out. There was a lot of fighting, a lot of increased stress for my girlfriend, which is unfortunate because I came here to help me and help her. And then uh, I find out about the Thai Kalat and Thai, and man, I was pissed. And, and I, I really chewed her out royally a couple of times, and, uh, you know, I mean, I totally lost it. And because that, that's a, that was no respect for the stress I was going through. Divorce forced retirement, series of unsuccessful back surgeries, 24-hour pain, come here and you screw with me on the language, totally not cool. So um, since then, I mean, we're, we're together and all, but it's, it's, you know, there's a little of a, as I say, when, with one of my companies when it was going south, the stars are out of our eyes, you know, there's a little bit of that, so I'm being careful. And I, I share all this from the heart. So other people can see the story, you know, it's, 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 it's cool. I mean, I'm here and I'm chilling, I'm loving it and, and no regrets. I mean, seriously, no regrets. Um, so that was the honeymoon phase went over and that started the stress phase, the frustration phase, they call it. But I would just say that was to me, that was just extreme stress. And I, I would, I would say uh, culture shock. I was in culture shock because I had worked so hard on the language, studied the culture so much and really it was more of the urban tie and not the country. And I, 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 I and, it, and it's just like if you were prepared to move to some uh, big fancy city, you end up in some hick town in the United States. You can imagine the shock, the difference. You show up in a three-piece suit and pe polished penny loafers and, you know, everybody's got overalls on and a piece of straw sticking out of their mouth. You know, you're, you're not prepared for that. You don't fit in. So that was the shocking part. And then I dug down and um, 
It was painful. It took months. She resisted for months, but I told her she had to teach me Tai Kola. And she didn't really want to. She kept saying, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then they just don't do it. The Thai is almost, remember, how they say no is my child, not yes. My child, my child, not yes. Um, and so she would say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then just uh, teach me. Or teach me one little stupid phrase that's meaningless. And then, okay, that's the lesson. You know, wow, look at that. You know, and uh, I don't think it's part of some evil plan. Okay, I'm not trying to paint a bad picture of anybody. I'm just saying that's what you can expect. Um, I've seen a couple people, a couple Thais that really want to teach their, their other half the language. But, uh, it's rare. Now, she's getting more on board now. She's got a lot more on board now. And I, I haven't been pushing this much either because I'm tired now. I had some extra pain lately and I'm just it's been distracting. But uh, um, you go through that. And then, so now I'm in an adjustment phase. I have what I have there with that relationship and it's pretty good. And, but I'm, I am, you know, careful what I invest in it. And, and I got my eyes wide open and I'm just seeing how that goes. And, you know, um, I've got, I've made a few friends. I had no friends. When you come here, you have no friends. I've made a handful of friends, some very nice people, some really cool guys. Um, and, uh, that's helped a lot too. And I've gotten to, to chance to build a schedule that I like, uh, around me. And, you know, now I'm alone a fair bit of the time. I mean, this is, this is a day, you know, this is just me hanging, you know, by myself here. And, um, uh, there's a recent uh, podcast on, or on one of the Joe Rogan episodes where some lady, uh, I think a famous rock climber or something, was talking about moving to Hawaii and she spent some time there or something or lived there for a while or whatever. And it was the description was the same thing as here, kind of. It's really, really interesting parallel. Maybe I'll, uh, I'll uh, see if I can do a commentary on that. It was kind of shocking the parallel. So I think it's just moving to any culture that's not your own. Whether you're a mainlander moving to Hawaii, or you're coming to here, uh, Thailand, as a, as, a, as, a, as a Westerner, as an American or something, I think, I guess it's just the same. What she was talking about, the experience she described is exactly the same. Apparently, when you just transplant cultures, it's the same thing. And, uh, and so now I'm at acceptance. I'm a happy guy. I sleep like a rock, and I've had all kinds of trouble sleeping. Very common for a guy my age to have trouble sleeping, and I've had plenty. I sleep well. I've been feeling good. And, and I've just been kind of just building my happy little schedule as I can based around my physical limitations. If I didn't have so many physical limitations, I'd be, I'd be doing more and doing even better. But, but that can't be changed and that can't be helped. So that's, that's just what it is. So I'm doing the best I can, I would say, here. And uh, that's been seven months to adjust. And I probably got hit pretty hard um, because it was such a short period of time. The COVID, the divorce, uh, forced to retire bad surgeries, relocating, prep for urban, ended up in country, didn't really understand the difference at all. I Just looking back, I was stupid. Why would you think one whole country would be all the same? Why would I think that you know New York and LA would be the same? They're not. Those people don't get along, typically. They're different. Um, you know, all that kind of hit at once. And uh, there we are. So the culture shock in Thailand, the four stages, kind of my trip and how I managed it and what you might be expected to do as well. And uh, we'll end it right there.